Okay, let's talk about forces a little bit more. There are four fundamental forces in the universe, all that have unique, interesting, special roles, and all of which work, we believe, in the same way, by exchanging virtual particles that we call force carrier particles. The weakest of the four forces is gravity. We only notice gravity because of huge objects like like planets, like stars and galaxies. Gravity is an extraordinarily weak force that acts because of the exchange of force carrier particles that we call gravitons. Maybe. Gravitons may or may not exist. We believe they do. The, dis the discovery and measurement of gravitational waves just last year taught us that they almost definitely do. But gravitons would be so weak and so low energy that they would be very, very difficult to detect. And as of right now, nobody has any idea how to do that. Of course, the role of gravity is to determine the large-scale structure of the universe, solar systems, galaxies, and so forth. Electromagnetism is the second strongest of the four fundamental forces, and it's the one that we notice the most. And I'm not just talking about sparks and lightning and magnets and things. Every force you've personally experienced that isn't gravity is electromagnetism. You have, uh, when you put your hands together and push, the electrons in your hand repel the electrons in the other part of your hand. You're held together because of the mutual attraction between electrons in one atom and protons in another. Uh, when you talk, the vibrations of air molecules happen because of electric forces between the electrons in one set of atoms and another. Electromagnetism holds everything together. It also causes all of the forces that we think of from tension in a rope to friction to really anything we've talked about except for gravity. And the force carrier particle for the electromagnetic force, as we mentioned before, is the photon. Virtual photons being exchanged between things is how electromagnetism works. So you're being held up right now because of an exchange of virtual light between your chair and your derriere. It's pretty neat stuff. The discovery of the proton in the early 1930s told us there had to be another force. Protons are positive, they're packed in super densely in the nucleus, and if you do the math of Fe equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, Coulomb's law, you find that protons should be flying apart from each other with enormous accelerations, and they don't. There has to be some sort of strong force in the nucleus gluing it together. Well, we call that force the strong nuclear force, and we call the force carrier particles that they exchange gluons. The strong force is the strongest of the four fundamental forces. Finally, we have the weak force. The weak nuclear force was obviously there because if the strong force was it inside the nucleus, d nuclear decay wouldn't happen. We have particles that spit out of unstable nuclei all the time. And in fact, we have particles that can turn into other particles through decay. Uh, remember, decay means transformation, not like a breakdown. And nuclear decay, particle decay, is caused by the weak force. The weak force is the second weakest of all of the fundamental forces. And its force carrier particle is called the W because we lack imagination. It turns out there's another force carrier particle for the weak force, and we decided to call that the Z because once you're using letters, you might as well use letters, I guess. Uh, the weak force, the role of it is, it sounds kind of lame, just decay, really, that's it. But particle decay is what makes nuclear fusion possible. The sun wouldn't shine without the weak force. So all four of the fundamental forces have extremely important roles, even the strong and weak force that are so tiny, we're never ever going to experience them. W and Z bosons, W and Z force carrier particles, are extremely massive. And that means that the range of the weak force is extremely short. Gluons are very, very massive as well, which makes the range of the strong force very short. 
Uh, interestingly, the strong force acts kind of like a rubber band as well. It, uh, it get, it's weak when things are super, super close to each other, but as they start to get further apart, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and then suddenly when they get too far apart, it kind of snaps and basically disappears. So you have to know the names of the four fundamental forces, how strong they are in order, and the names of their force carrier particles. So let's take them in order. Gravity is the weakest of the four forces. It is mediated by the graviton, and it has an infinite range. The next weakest is the weak nuclear force. It's mediated by the W and Z boson, and it is a very, very short-ranged force. The next weakest is, well, the second strongest, would be the electromagnetic force. The electromagnetic force is mediated by photons. It has, as far as we know, an infinite range. And then finally, the strong nuclear force is mediated by gluons and has an extraordinarily short range. It is the strongest of the four by far. These four fundamental forces make up the first part of what we call the standard model of particle physics, which is essentially the description of how everything works. The second section of the standard model I'm going to call the particle zoo because there's a lot of funny things going on with particles and it became very frustrating in the 20th century to try and sort it all out. But for the most part, we believe we have. That's coming up in the next video.